God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him.
conquered it all mm, Hallelujah You conquered it you conquered it all, hallelujah You conquered it all, you conquered it all, hallelujah Oh, you conquered it all And you are Lord of all and be glad in it and this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it and this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it oh rejoice rejoice today the Lord has made so we celebrate that this is the day the Lord has made and I will Rejoice and be glad in it And this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad And this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad Always oh, celebrate This is your day And this is the day the Lord has made I and be glad in it And this is the day The Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad And this is the day The Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad Oh, we celebrate We celebrate your name Cause this is the day The Lord has made I will rejoice and be Celebrate you. 
Cause today is about you You're the light shining in the darkness You're the light shining in the darkness You're the light shining in the darkness We celebrate, we celebrate you You're the light shining in the darkness You're the light shining in the darkness Oh, we celebrate you all, but today is all about you. Hey, today is all about you. Today is all about you. Oh, we sing your praise today.
just one drop of your blood It's always been enough I can't thank you enough, God Thank you for the sun Thank you for the cross Thank you for your blood
Father, we thank you for the holiness and the joy and the love that we feel in this room right now, Lord. And all over the world, I know they're feeling the touch of God. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. It's an honor to be in your presence this morning, to be with people that love you, to worship you together, Lord. Lord, we come together to be with you, to talk to you, to receive from you. You are so good and so worth it. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Such a beautiful presence this morning. Good to see everybody again. And what a conference so far, amen? We've had, amen. We've had a lot of fun, and uh, God's done a lot of good things in us. And we always say, even if those of us who travel with Kevin, we, every time we leave, we feel a little lighter, <laughs> a little freer. And uh, because you live through this life long enough, there's stuff that you got to let go of. It's stuff you got you to retrain your mind. You got to renew your mind. And we're always learning, always growing in revelation. Amen. So that's why you need to get into as many conferences and watch as many conferences as possible because uh, God is doing so much. And there's, there's something, um, no offense for those who are watching, we love you very much, but there's something about actually being in the room you know what I'm saying? And, and there's, a, there's an impartation that comes that you receive. And of course you can do that online, but I'm just saying when we're all together, when I see you, you see me, there's just something about being together and being in the presence of the Lord. And, just, and then when Kevin teaches and receiving that impartation. So with that being said, we want to uh, encourage you to continue to come out to the meetings. We have a few left this year. We have uh, the next big one is in Dalton, as big as in it's a longer conference, December 12th and 13th in Dalton, uh, uh, Georgia with John Ramirez and Kevin Zadai. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to beat up some devils, I'm sure, uh, with uh, there's going to be a lot of action and so good stuff. And so if you can make it out to Dalton, Georgia in, in uh, November 12th and 13th, we'd love to see you there. And then Amarillo, anybody in Texas ever heard of Amarillo? Amarillo, uh, November 15th, we're going to be there. Kevin's going to do a special one-night meeting only. Uh, it's a smaller group of people uh, in Amarillo, November 15th. So we'd love to see your face if you can drive up and be part of that in Amarillo or those watching online. And then November 19th, Texarkana, we're going to be there. Plenty of room in Texarkana. Uh, we're going to be there already because Kevin's going to be ministering at a children, children's home. It's not open to the public, but uh, that's what, why we're going to be there. So he said, let's do a meeting in Texarkana. And so, Kevin, I just want you to know that Kevin and Kathy, uh, while you're not looking, uh, they're going to be doing these meetings for these children. And uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's I, I can't even, it's awesome. Uh, these children who don't have a, uh, mom or dad, you know, uh, uh, around them. Uh, Kevin and Kathy have a real heart for them. So that's going to be a lot of fun at the children's home. And then, of course, December uh, 3rd and 4th, we're going to be in Tampa Bay, Florida. And that will be uh, uh, a powerful meeting down there. So we're excited about that. Uh, one announcement Kevin told me on the way in, uh, we want to make sure that if you are here if you are here and uh, you're going through a tough time financially, uh, you can feel free to grab a book or a CD off the table before you, you leave. And uh, a, a good book, a good book, if you're having a tough time, is Supernatural Finances. Uh, I've, that's a powerful book. He comes from an angle that you probably have never seen before when it comes to Supernatural Finances. And I'll say this. One thing, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Kevin said that the Lord told him, if you chase money, it'll always be three feet in front of you. How many know that feeling? But if, if you chase Jesus, money will follow you. Amen. So that's, that's kind of the premise of that book, Supernatural Finances. So if you're going through a tough time, and that's under, uh, understandable. Grab that book or another book that you, catches your eye. So Kevin and Kathy wanted to give you, uh, just give that to you if uh, on the way out today. If you can't afford something, feel free to grab that. 
Uh, one more reminder before we take the offering is if you, because people keep talking to me about the fellowships, if you want to be involved with a fellowship, if you want to host one, you have to become a student. But if you want to be involved with a fellowship, and I know we have people here. Raise your hand if you're involved with a fellowship here in this area, a warrior fellowship. Yeah, we have several here. And so uh, if you want to be a part of a warrior fellowship, there's a supplement to the local body, the local church. And these warrior fellowships are just, they're incredible. We're seeing, we're seeing amazing things happen. But you can go online and say, you can fill out the form to find a warrior fellowship near you. Or if you want to host one, uh, we can give you that information as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Amen. All right, let's take an offering together for awesome ushers would come forward. That'd be great. If you're making out a check, you can make it out to Warrior Notes and you can do text to give both in this uh, room or online. The number should be on your screen. You can do text to give. We're, cer we're certainly so thankful for everybody that's uh, given to this ministry. I don't know where Mike is. Mike, how many partners uh, do we have now? Over 14,000 partners. Uh, over 14,000 people. And many of you are sitting right here. And watching online, yeah, you can give a hand for the partners. That's okay. But everything that, the, the reason why, one of the reasons why we can, uh, Kevin can give away stuff so much is because of the partners and all your study guides and CDs that you get at all the conferences. Those are because of the partners. And if you want to be a partner, I'm sure Mike will talk about that. But uh, that's, that's why we can do what we do. And uh, the more uh, that God brings in, it seems like the more we give out as a ministry, Kevin gives out. And so we just thank you for being a part of this ministry. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give and to your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into good soil, to, to sow into good things. And Lord, we thank you that you love a cheerful giver. So you love us. Because we're happy to give. We're happy to let you have whatever you want to have, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for this conference. We thank you for everything that you've done already. We thank you for the word of the Lord that's about to be brought forth. And Lord, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ushers. Amen. How many of you have been transformed this weekend? Isn't the Lord incredible? Isn't it incredible? And the beautiful thing is like Kevin teaches, you have a ministry of reconciliation. So that means you get to take the transformation, you get to take the power of the Holy Spirit and you get to give it out to your family, to your communities, to your church, right? Amen. Isn't that exciting that you have the answer? The thing that everybody's been looking for, you have it inside of you. Isn't that incredible? So remind yourself of that daily. And you know, I just want to say again, thank you to all the partners for making this possible because it's, it's just so incredible, all the work that goes into this and the fruit that comes out is incredible. The testimonies that we hear all the time is just so astounding. So thank you partners for everything you've done. We're so excited about what God's going to do in 2022 and we want to encourage you guys, partners as well, to be looking at the events tab on the website kevinzadai.com because there's going to be many, many, many locations that we're hosting conferences that we're coming to. And if you're watching online, you can go to kevinsadi.com, look at all the events. And uh, we know we'll be back in Texas because Kevin and Kathy love Texas. <laughs> God's doing a work here, amen. And let me encourage you with this. If you're wanting to know how to plug in, um, you can, at the table, we have the ability where you can get set up to join as a partner. You can join the school. You can find out how to get involved. And then another way, and I know we've said it a couple times, is now that we have Warrior Chat, it is just, it's going to be the go-to place to be a part of the Warrior Notes community. Um, we've already got groups for the fellowships, for the students, for the partners, for music, for Warrior Jet, all these things, Warrior Health, and many of the ministries that are on Kevin and Kathy's heart are going to be there. We're going to have groups, and we're going to have communication. So if you want to be a part of Warrior Chat, the first step is to be a partner, because Kevin and Kathy want those that are called to be a part of Warrior Notes to be the ones that have that exclusive access because you guys are family. And in this time, yeah, you can give that a clap. That's awesome, isn't it? 
And so if you're wanting to be a partner, if you're online and watching, you can go to the website, kevinzada.com. You can partner with Warrior Notes because we believe that in partnership, there is the transferring, there is the connecting, right? It's, a, it's a being a part of what God is doing in this time and in this generation. And so it's, it's more than just money. It's about being a part of what God is doing, right? And so, and I just... So many times uh, people don't realize all the benefits that Kevin and Kathy have created with partnership. But, you know, we also have Warrior Notes TV. That's its, its own website. It's its own app. And for if you're watching online, you, can, you know, many of you watch on YouTube, but you can watch on the app with no commercials. And we get emails all the time saying, hey, I think something was cut out or something was changed. Well, you can watch the unedited on the Warrior Notes TV app. And so if you're out there watching online, we get emails all the time about this. We want you to know on the app. So now we have Warrior Ch a Warrior Chat app. We also have the Warrior TV app. And let's just take over the world for Jesus. Let's just do that. Amen. And last thing I want to put a plug in for is if you're here, we have cards on the tables where we have several courses that you can get half off. So grab one of those cards as you're going out. Don't forget we got a new course coming out next week, Days of Heaven on Earth, which is going to be incredible. And with that being said, if you are a teenager and you're 13 or up, or if you're a single parent, on the school website, which is warriornoteschool.com, I want you to apply for a scholarship because Kevin and Kathy want to give every one of you three courses at no cost to sow into your calling and your destiny. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So, we're going to see you on chat. We're going to see you at the conferences coming up. But most of all, we're going to go and fulfill the Great Commission, which is what? We're going to go into all the world, right? Amen? All right, Dr. Kevin Zadai. Thank you all. Thank you all. I, I'm so thankful for you all. I am. I am. Uh, I told the Lord this morning. I, I got up and I, I said, Lord, you know those kids last night while I'm preaching, they're back there throwing their airplanes in the air and playing. And I'm thinking, I'm going to get somebody else to preach. I'm going to go back there and <laughs> fly airplanes. You know, I don't know. I get I get overwhelmed by the goodness of the Lord because I I really don't. In my own strength, I don't want to do this at all, you know, because I worked really hard at my career just to, just to be able to retire. <laughs> so I worked really hard. Kathy and I, we worked extra. There, we wouldn't see each other for long periods of time because I would just stay out and fly. And she would, uh, you know, do, run her business. And we just agreed we're just going to work and retire 10 years early. So we did that. And um, the Lord told me to retire, but then he told me to write my first book. And I didn't want to write that book. It took me a year and a half to write that book. And now it takes, you know, just a, a couple weeks to write a book because I have so much help. But um, when I wrote that book, it essentially took what was inside of me and put it out there. And then that met a need and it just started this whole thing. It's just, it'll be five years here. We just, a couple weeks ago was five years. And um, I, I think that if we just keep it simple and keep it about people, everything's gonna be fine. Yes. But my, my desire is to help the kids. And uh, so I'm working to get everybody in line so that they can just run the ministry uh, you know, a bunch of warriors just run the ministry and then I will focus on you know, the 22,000 students and I'm going to focus on the kids. And I want to, um, there's a bunch of albums that I want to do. I want to do, um, well, if I tell people, you know, I can't really announce it because when I do that, people go and they grab everything I say and they get the rights to it before I even do it. So um, I'm not going to tell you, but it's, it's going to be really a cool couple projects we're going to do with music, and then we're going to get the kids to help me do the albums too as well. And um, a, fr a friend of mine that works um, 
in top secret projects, he is, he's being forced to retire for, you know, that thing. And um, he, he's, he's uh, at the highest level of black projects. So he asked me, he goes, um, what should I do? And I go, well, I can't tell you what to do. You know, I'm not a doctor and I, I, I'm really careful to hire people that are professionals so that I, I, let, them, I let them do their, their thing, you know. So we're gonna start Warrior Health. Yeah. And, and, God, and God is gonna do it with excellence, but he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna uh, it's just gonna happen. Uh, it's just like Warrior Chat, I started talking about it and, and it took, the devil put the brakes on, it took a whole year because the world's involved with, you know, making something like Facebook. So it took a whole year just because I announced it. So it should have started a year ago. And it, it doesn't even matter if you have money. It's like getting people to do something. It's just, it's amazing. It's like, it, it's just amazing to me. So we're doing it right with this guy. He, he said, what should I do? And I said, well, I can't tell you what to do. I said, but if you were, if you were my brother or my family, I would, put, I would put your retirement notice in next month. 36 years, you know. He goes, before I could even finish that, he goes, well, can I work for you? And I, I said, yes, because what I need is, I need to secure servers. I need to secure servers all over the, all over the place so that, so that we don't have anybody Ta they, they actually, they actually, right now, if they don't like what I say, they have five second delay and they just take it right out like that as I'm talking live. That's why I don't use the code words. And every now and then I use them on purpose to see if they're, if the, uh, the artificial intelligence has taken them out. And then they just start doing some things that I don't even want to mention, but they do, they do, they do things to try to, uh, it's, a, it's a shot across the bow at me to, to, to cool it. So if I have this guy and I have uh, all this technology, what I'll do is I'll put servers and then we'll own everything. So we'll have our own TV. And then we have our own TV already, you know, and we have, we have our own, uh, our own uh, media, social media platform. And if we have the servers, then uh, they would, they, what, what was done yesterday, that's what they would have to do. They would have to shut off the electricity, which is what they do. They, they, uh, they shut off the internet for the hotel or wherever we're at, they'll just shut it off. So we're, we're fixing that too. But if I have to buy satellites, I will, you know. Anyway, anyway this, this, gets to be, this gets to be a thing about what God's heart is for his, his creation. You know, this gets to be about the plan being wrapped up at the end of the age and how a boa constrictor or a python, that's the spirit, it comes and it wraps itself around and squeezes you and it waits for you to exhale and then it tightens even further so you can't inhale. And that's how, that's how this religious spirit works. This is how that spirit of the, of the Antichrist works is it squeezes the life out of you and it restricts you. And it's amazing how I, when I'm in interviews in the, in the world, I'm allowed to say the word God, but if I say the word Jesus Christ, they take it out. And I'm like, well, what is it, what is it about that name that you're afraid of? Why? And they, they, they say, well, you know, well, so there's no power in Buddha. There's no power in Muhammad, you know, and all these other false gods. But when you say the name of Jesus, it's very powerful. And, so I'm just denouncing, I'm, I'm going to own everything. I'm going to own everything. You should own everything. And, listen, and, and you know, you're going to find out to find, you know, you'll find this out in heaven, but finances is more about authority than it is giving. And that goes over well with my friends. Listen, money is a way that the, Satan controls this world. Money is worth nothing. The, the, the value of the money, they've already spent it before they print it. 
So there is no value to it. It's what, it's the demand and it's, it's, what, it's what is placed on it in a system. The only way to win against this is to realize that you have a higher value than the money system. Amen. And that your life, your will in your life is what Satan is after. He's after your will because if he can hijack you, you won't do what you're supposed to do. You won't do God's heart. The value, the highest value in heaven is people's souls. The people up there are the currency of heaven. You're the currency of heaven, but you're on the earth. The only way that you're going to win down here is to realize your value and produce fruit. Now, it might come in the form of money, but it, it may not. You might get paid back in heaven, but records are being kept. So my desire for this ministry, the reason that I came this morning, when I'd rather be playing, you know, in the back room there with the kids, throwing it, <laughs> is because I have to finish this up and get you to the place, the, the body of Christ has to get to the place where they realize their value and then the kingdom of God advances and we don't worry about the tares. We, they, they stay in place, it says, until the end. The angels come and take them and burn them. It says that they separate them at the end. The, the five unwise virgins, they were separated at the end when the bridegroom came. But up until that time, they were all virgins. They were all waiting. They all fell asleep. But there was only five that discerned that they, they needed to prepare themselves for, uh, for that time. And it's the same way with the goats and the sheep. You can't convert a goat to a sheep. And so you don't even try. You don't even try to do that. Jesus didn't try. When the goats came, he said, who's warned you the coming wrath? So the religious, the religious system is tied at the end of the age to the Antichrist. But see, you, you think now, oh, you know, all your church friends, well, what happens when push comes to shove? And they're in a survival mode, they're gonna sell you out just like Peter did, Jesus. See, everything was fine until it came down to, do you really love me, Peter? I would die for you. I would die for you. That's his famous last words. And they all ran like little girls and hid, screaming. Even John, who bragged about the disciple that Jesus loved, you know. So I want to get everybody ready to the place where they won't sell out. You know, like a... Like a in other words, in other words you, you have to realize that you have eternal life. You're never going to die. You're going to shed this body, but you're never going to die. It's that easy. It really is that easy. I mean, it could happen right now. And I'd be on the floor and you'd want to do CPR and I'd be screaming, do not touch me. <laughs> That's what it would be. I do not. Get, get away. <laughs> and I'd be like standing here and I wouldn't have felt any pain. I wouldn't have felt any pain. I would have, I, I would, I would just be transferring over. But I feel like at the end of the age, I mean, from what I saw is that the church is like Enoch. And, and Enoch just walked with God and then he was not because he pleased God. That's how I see, you know, like if people ask, do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? And uh, you know, of course, to get a degree in theology, I had to study all this stuff. And it was like they, they taught you the seven different views of it, and I just wanted the right one. So when I was, when I was uh, getting all my pilot's certificates and things back in the 80s, um, I had to take eight different FAA tests, and just one of them you have to memorize a thousand questions for each test. and. There's only a hundred asked. You don't know which one of the thousand. There's a hundred asked, and you, you, I think um, you can get a 92, so you can miss eight. 
out of 100? And they're all hard questions. I don't think you'd be able to answer one of them. I mean, I, I, it was just bizarre. I mean, it's not like, okay, how many wings does an airplane have? It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't that kind of stuff. It was like stuff that there's no way. And, and to this day, I've never used a lot of it. But it's stuff that, you know, anyway. I learned to just memorize the right answers to the thousand questions. So they, you buy the book and it, and it has all thousand questions in it. And then I would just circle the right answer and then I would just look at that constantly. And then I'd go and take the test and I would be the first one done because I would just only recognize out of the four answers for each question I would only answer, I could only see the right one because that's all I ever looked at. So I would just finish it in 10 minutes and I would hand it in. And they're like, are you sure you want to hand this in? Because you're, you're done once you do that. If you fail it, you, you know, there, you, there's no recourse. And I go, oh, no, I'm good. And I did that eight times. I did that for eight different tests. And then I would go and get my ratings. And I learned something from that. And I think you should learn something, too. We, you got to remember why we're in the position we're in here on the earth is because we know the, the difference between good and evil. We can... We shouldn't know the, 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 the evil part. Think about it for a minute. It was never in, intended for God to allow us to know good and evil. Because if we know evil, we're not God. So we would, we would be seduced into doing evil. It would influence us where it wouldn't influence God. God ate from that tree all the time in front of Adam and Eve. That was to prove that he was God and they were not. That was why that was there. They were never supposed to eat of that and they, they, they wouldn't have wanted to. So you have to remember that, that you don't need to concentrate on, on what's being said and done in the world. It's just, do, they're just doing that to stir you up. But the, it's, you're, you feel powerless. But you're not powerless. So you concentrate on all the righteousness and justice of God and you, you, you feed yourself on the word of God because then you know only the right answers and you'll pass your test. You understand? Okay. All right. So the, uh, the subject matter this morning is called supernatural displacement. And when the spirit of God a couple years ago, I've been holding on to this. When he spoke to me about this message, I just went upstairs and I, into my studio and did a CD on it, and then I just put it on the shelf. And I did that for, for 30 or 40 different subjects, which are now gonna become books after these several years of it just sitting there. Supernatural displacement, the Holy Spirit kept saying that. And I was wondering like, well, why? Why displacement, what are you saying? And it's kind of like uh, what I'm talking about, about owning everything. And about like how we think money, we get money by giving money. But it's just kind of like asking God for something he already wants to give you. But see, that's prayer. He still asks us to ask him. But he already wants to give it to us. He wants us to pray. If, 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 if he was just going to be in control, like he's not. He's not in control, obviously, of this world. The God of this world is Satan. That's what Paul said, if you want to bring him into it. So, so the deception is that God is in control. Whatever he wants to do, he's going to do. And we sit and we wait and we deteriorate. And, and if you don't change your diet today, you're, you're going to have the same result. Tomorrow you're going to wake up with the same thing because you didn't do anything. So it's the same way with God's word. So supernatural displacement, he showed me, he goes, no. He said, you start to focus on people's value. And he said, you're going to have plenty of money to do what I called you to do. And start teaching them about the fact that giving is because you want to give. But it actually unhooks you from the world system to give. But you got to think about this. The hook comes in in one direction, but it has to be taken out in the same direction. It has to be, in, I mean, in the opposite direction, it has to be pulled out. So when you get a fish hook inside of you, you can't keep pulling it the way it came in. 
you have to take it out and unhook yourself. Unhook. Unhook. Did I mention unhook? Yeah. Okay, so giving, tithing, all this, all the information about giving is to unhook you from the world system. I don't think you're getting it yet. The, the tithe, the tithe, the whole idea about the tithe was it was never yours. The tree was never a man's. That tree was God's in the garden. I know you're not getting it because there'd be tambourines and flags. No, the, the tree was placed there because that was God's tithe. That, that, was, that was his. It was never a, the man's. Man. But Adam and Eve were so much like God that they would start to think they were God. See, we don't have any concept of this, but I'm going to keep talking until you get it. You're going to get a smile on your face and I'm going to know the value that we have. We are so much like our Father God that He asks us to be imitators of Him Amen. as dearly loved children. Amen. This, this system down here is a, is a hijack system and they route you a certain way. They route you into debt. They route, right, they route you into pharmacia. Pharmacia. They don't, they don't always route you. Now, no, so, no, understand, sometimes when something's growing in you, you need to get it taken out. True. It's, a foreign, it's a foreign thing, okay? But let's get to the problem, the root of it. What, what is it that's causing these tumors? What's causing, you know, there, 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 there is a real pandemic and it has to do with other things, not what the obvious is. It has to do with people's thyroid and people's pancreas and cancer. Why is it that we as a country are so sophisticated, but we can't, can't, we can't uh, conquer cancer? But third world countries, like in Iran, I've seen newspaper clippings of people that are 145, 147, 151. One guy, 174, and he believes in Allah, and he doesn't believe in healing. So what's going on? What, why is it that some of the relatives in our family are Nordic or Swedish, and you look at them, and they live to be, I mean, the whole side of Kathy's family lives to be 100 gets a letter from the president, not this one, of course, but, <laughs> but they, get let, they get like common, and you look at their skin and they're like, oh my God, well, what is that? Well, if I'm asking it, don't you think the medical field should be asking that? Okay, so you, you look at what it is about them, their bloodlines and their genetics, you look at their diet, you, you know, you do this, so you do this with your giving, you do this in every, your relationships, you look at, okay, what's going on? And you, you do what the Lord did when he appeared to me a couple years ago, me and Kathy, uh, I was up in my prayer room, our prayer room, and, and um, the Lord, the Lord came in when I was sitting in my chair and he said, what's bothering you? And you know how we say, like you just want to say nothing. But I mean, the, the king of glory, he just came, he looked like us. I mean, he, he didn't have all that, I mean, I didn't fall, I didn't like, you know, I didn't feel like I was in a fire tunnel or Benny Hinn just breathed on me or anything like that, you know? <laughs> because he, you know, that, that man, it was, when I met him, he was just as strong sitting there in the, in the lobby of a hotel for an hour as he is when, when he was in the meetings in, in the 20, you know, 2011, 2008, 29, all of that power, that was real. And that man was real. That power was real. But when I sat with him in that power, it was normal. He gave me permission to walk in that. He prophesied over me and sent me out. I haven't seen him since. That was in 1986. I just walked away with what he had on him because he gave it to me. 
Never seen him since. His daughter said, you, you know, I'm going to tell my dad. I, went, you know, I, didn't, he, I don't think he even remembers you. I said, you know, I don't need to talk to him. She's like, what? I said, no, I got it. Just tell him thank you. Well, what about everything else? Don't you think there's an impartation for your finances? Yes. And what about your relationships? Or what about your health? Like, in other words, I don't want to mask what's going on. So Jesus asked me this, and that's why we're going to do warrior health. He asked me, no. I said, he said, I said, well, I said, I told him, I said, okay, I, this is what's bothering me. He said, and immediately he said, what's the root of that? And it changed my life. I said, I'm going to need some time. It took three days for me to figure out why I am the way I am and why I'm bothered. I, I said, it's, it's because of my father. He didn't tell me he loved me until I was a junior in college. And he did it on the phone. He couldn't even do it in person. It was my father's image that prevented me from being able to go any further in my relationship with my Heavenly Father. And so I started to work on releasing my heart to my Father God. And I started talking to my Father. He got saved. He wept and apologized for how he treated me. He became my best partner in the ministry. And before, before he passed away, he, I, I think he knew he was passing away because I never did get to talk to him again. He called me and gave me the best, the best talk I've ever heard from any of partner of my ministry. In tears, he said, you have no idea what you're doing for the world. You're helping people never back off. So last words from his mouth, he passed away. Same thing happened with several other people. I talked to them. I didn't know they were going to pass away in a couple of days. Said the exact same thing to me and then passed away. So I have several people in heaven right now that they almost sensed before they passed to tell me some things. And I've had supernatural things happen that you know, people would freak out over because they think I'm communicating with the dead. But these people weren't dead. They were alive. They're in heaven. And um, so I wasn't communicating with the dead. But they came, they, came, they came with Jesus. And they encouraged me from, the, from that, 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 you know, the, they were the, the cloud. Of, it was from the cloud of witnesses. I mean, they came out and they talked to me, encouraged me. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. But don't tell anybody because people get upset about this stuff. But the cloud of witnesses up there is cheering us on. Amen. And if one steps three feet out from the, from the crowd and says something to me, you know, <laughs> it's just three feet. <laughs> they said to me, especially the lady that introduced me to my wife, and she knew a whole year before I even met her that we would be married. She's a, a very powerful woman of God. She passed away. And um, that night, I didn't even get to see her before she passed. And I heard, I heard her yelling. I was asleep. I heard her yelling. And I woke up and I looked up and the roof of our apartment was gone. <laughs> and she was up there on the balcony. And she's like, Kevin, Kevin. She's like waving at me. And I'm like... Okay, so I went like this and I, I touched my wife because I, I'm a pilot, so I like, like to, I have to verify everything. So I'm like, okay, I can, feel, I can feel her, she's there. She said, Kevin, she said, I've just been to see Jesus. Because when you get there, you don't go automatically right to the throne. You, you don't go, you have to get prepared before you go to the front. You don't just don't go there. And, um, you usually have an angel or someone come and take you around. And um, then you have to prepare to meet him. You know, so Jesus is walking around and then you meet him. At a certain point, you have an appointment with him. So 
she had, she had just been, had her interview and um, he does an audit and then you get rewards and things like that. But he, she, she said, I just been with the Jesus. And she said, all those things we talked about, because the deal was that she was older than me. So she would pass away first. So she was going to go to Jesus. She told me, she said, when I pass, I'm going to go to Jesus and all these things. Like I, um, she said, because, uh, uh, you're going to have an album. You're going to have books. Um, you're going to have a ministry and you're going to have a, a jet. She, she told me all these things. She would pray for me. And she said, if I go first and you haven't gotten any of these things, I'm going to make sure that I have a meeting and tell Jesus that he needs to get this stuff for you. Okay. So, so she's leaning over this balcony and she said to me, she said, Kevin, I just want you to know, I told Jesus all the things I promised I would tell him. And she said, and she started laughing. She goes, you're going to get everything. <laughs> And I have to, you know, I, I've never told this before. I, I, I just decided this morning, if I'm going to continue to keep doing this, I'm not going to hold anything back anymore. Because I feel like we're getting so close to the end. And um, there's so much that God wants to do. And it breaks his heart that things are being delayed. It breaks his heart that you all are not being able to fulfill everything that he has in his heart for you. So he does these supernatural things where it's displacement. What he does is he comes in, he comes in to you like he did, he did to me and visits you. And he tells you, listen, what is bothering you? But he already knows what's bothering you. And it's just like when he tells you to pray, like I said, you, you pray, but you, you feel like, well, God already knows. But there has to be, the thing that's not understand down here is that there has to be a legal transaction because you are the authority on the earth. See, I'm not holding back anymore. And I know, I'm, I know how people are, but I, I really don't care. Because we have a belly button, we are legally here. Satan does not have a belly button. He's not, he's not legally in charge. He stole it from Adam and Eve. You are legally here because you're a human being. The only thing that he has left is to make you not fully a human being. Backing out. Nice and slow. It's always been about the blood. It's always been about genetics. Look at Genesis 6. Look, look at what's going on now. This is just a test run. But I didn't sign up for the test. I'm not going to be part of that test. I'm going to do something that's sure. And that is, is that God has, has already spoken about us before he formed us in our mother's womb. He's already written about us. All right. So if you have been given the authority over the earth. God didn't make hell. They would tell you. 
They know that they're from another dimension. They're not from another planet. That's an exact quote from someone who would Don't even come and visit me. Keep your life sweet. So, so how, how much can you handle if I tell you the truth? But how much of it can you really handle? But if it'll wake you up, is that, that you are in charge? Think you don't know how much you've been lulled to sleep. You're waiting for someone else to lead you. If you look at Ephesians chapter 4, the fivefold ministry of the church is not there. I'm not going to even say it. No, I'm not going to say it. No, because no matter what, it's a trap. No matter what I say. Listen, it says that they're there to build you up in the maturity, in the unity of the faith. To maturity. Build you up. They're, it says they're assigned to the body. They're not supposed to prophesy against nations or give anybody a word. They're to build you up so you can hear from God. Amen. It's always been about control. Then I feel like a Star Spangled Banner is going to start <laughs> behind me and the flag's going to come up. Think about it. The plan, the plan was for God to have a family. Yeah. And the mystery that was hidden for ages was, was Christ in us, the hope of glory, not apostles over us. <laughs> but I honestly believe that there, there is a government in those fivefold ministers. It's a government. But if you look at history, it always goes toward control. And I want you to know why. It's the spirit of the world. It's the control of the Antichrist spirit that wants to always peak up. It's not just effective to be in the obvious, like getting into governments. It has to be sneaking into churches, that spirit. See. Jesus only had opposition, not from Rome. He had it from the religious group. It had infiltrated it. So at what point does one of the fivefold ministries go rogue on you? And who's going to be the first to stand up and say, you know what? You're fired. So how do you fire your government? How do you fire someone who's over you and controlling you? Just give them the hand, you know. Why? Because you have a belly button. And you have the Holy Spirit within you. Now, it says that you don't need anyone to teach you. Well, we understand that, of course, I'm a teacher. And I'm teaching by the Holy Spirit, then that's fine. If I'm not teaching by the Holy Spirit, then don't listen to me. But you don't need anyone to teach you, it says, because there were false teachers coming in with false doctrine. And those apostles were protecting their flock from false doctrine. And that's what Paul did in all his letters. He was constantly addressing the belief that he was given, the belief system that he was given. He enforced that. He goes, you know, this is what I received from the Lord. But it wasn't just to control people. It was to build them up so that they could be protected. There's a, there's a difference. If you don't believe that there's a wall there, then don't listen to me. But we're all going to watch you. <laughs> we're going to try not to laugh. But see, that's all I can do. I can announce there's four walls. You might want to take the door. But how many people really that you know have done stupid things? And that's what John Wayne said. He said, life is hard, but it's even harder when you're stupid. <laughs> so displacement is when you are activated and you fall into place. Now, not everyone is called to be an apostle or a prophet or a pastor or a teacher or evangelist. But I think based on being off the carousel for a while, coming back, and seeing the condition of, the, of what, what things are here in the church. I'm not concentrating on the world. 
I'm going to concentrate on my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. I see that everybody has goes through these cycles of overemphasis on one thing. And then, you know, like, like overemphasis on fasting, you know, and then I lost half my hair. <laughs> and then like, at what point, it, you know, is it, is it better just to like, you know, like maybe eat every, every 20 days, you know, at least, you know. <laughs> and to think that I ate breakfast this morning and the power of God's stronger than when I would fast for 20 or 30 days. What happened? I recognize my value. I, I mean, I am always going to be Kevin. A Kevin that God loves, but he's got to get something over to me or I'm going to stay untransformed. I'm not going to change. See, I'm looking for change. I'm looking for transformation. Well, you've got to sow in today to get that. Well, I sow into the fact that I don't need to know evil. I sow into that by only emphasizing on the right answers because that's all I need to know is the right answers to pass my test. I don't need to know what everybody else is doing. Okay. It's interesting to me how the change happens when people say, hey, you know, I noticed your hair's growing back. What are you doing? And I tell them, okay, this is what I'm doing. Well, it was always meant that I'd have my hair back because I was never supposed to lose it. But what was it that was happening in my body personally? And the Holy Spirit was going to correct it. He was going to tell me what to do. And then when you share stuff with other people, it sometimes doesn't work for other people because their body's different. But there are common things. Well, it's the same with finances. What did you do, you know, that you got out of debt? Well, I've, the Lord told me it's not your inflow, it's your outflow. He said, you have a, a certain amount of money coming in, but you can control what goes out. And he started to show me things that I could do myself or that people were ripping me off or, you know, I really didn't need that. And he told me, like, you know, like the, in Phoenix, our air conditioner, I don't think it ever stopped, ever. It was always running. And I was so concerned because out there, I don't know why, because you can get one, like in New Orleans, you can get one for a third the cost of Arizona, but I guess it's because they can get that kind of money off you. You know, I just, it was cheaper just to put one on my jet and just fly it out, buy it in New Orleans. But I always thought, you know, because like, I got to start saving because when that thing goes out, and that's what I was thinking, when that thing goes out, when that thing goes out, I'm going to have to pay $30,000 for a new air conditioner. And um, the Lord said, well, first of all, how would you like to cut your, your cooling bills in half in your house? I go, I'm all ears. So he told me six things to do, and I did that. I cut the, he, the, the, I cut the bill in half. I got a tool belt, and I went to work. <laughs> and I go out to that, that air conditioner, and I'd pray over it. And then one day it went out. Called a repairman, brand new company. The kid was so excited. Brand new van, you know. So I'm out in the backyard and I'm like, he's getting nervous. Power of God's strong. And I'm standing there with him. He's getting nervous because he knows he's, he's going to have to lie to me like everybody else does. And he doesn't want to. And my wife, we had this word, it's just a fan. It's just a fan is the word we got, just a fan. So he opens the panel and he goes, Mr. Zadai, he said, this is what we're told to do. You can never tell anybody. So I guess I shouldn't be telling you. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's this little capacitor in there. 175 bucks. He said, these things just blow, and then we're told to just say you need a new heat exchanger or whatever, you know. He said, I'm just going to get you one. Puts it in. We sold the house at 18 years and it's still running. Then when we were in New Orleans, I, the Lord says, you're going to get two air, new air conditioners. And I'm like, okay. So when we bought the house, I said, you know, we're going to redo everything. We come out and he goes, oh, Mr. Zadai, he goes, uh, he says, there's 5,000 off each air conditioner right now because it's October. I said, put them in. And I'm thinking $8,600 a piece versus the 33,000 you know, out there. I'm thinking, okay, I started to realize something that what you don't know could hurt you. So when God comes into your life in a stronger way and he, and he starts to say stuff to you, like, well, what's bothering you? What he's really doing is he's getting, he wanting to get to the root at why you are the way you are. And it's because you're in the way. And he wants to get you out of the way and help you because it's right there. You don't have to even move. You don't have to do a thing except listen and become smarter. You have to become aware. So like last night, I said that a lot of these things frustrate you because you're pow you feel powerless to do anything about it. But what the Lord would tell you if he would come to you right now, he would say, well, let's focus on what you can change. And he said, let's start with you. Because really, it's how you deal with stress. Jesus told me it's wasted energy to worry. It's literally wasted resources. He told me, he said, in your mind, you're not going to fix anything. It's, it won't manifest. You can't use your mind to try to p figure out plan A, B, and C. You have to do something from your heart that causes a manifestation. You got to put action toward your goal. You cannot just in your mind worry about things that haven't happened yet, or even if they have happened. You got to receive your instructions down here. So the emphasis in the world is to get you so involved in your mind, building up your mind and your brain and building up your physical appearance in some way, either by working out extensively, always emphasizing, looking at all the models that are anorexic and they have written about it, making it impossible for you to match the Barbie doll. Make it impossible to be like Bruce Jenner, who is now a woman. It's like the great switch, you know, so it, it just all of a sudden, he, it's not my goal anymore. The, the Wheaties box doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't match what's going on. Okay, so you, whatever it is that you desire, you should pray and you ask for it then you should immediately be expecting the Spirit to communicate with you toward that because you prayed. And of course, the Holy Spirit is wanting to get you towards that right now. As soon as you pray. Je Jesus prompts you this morning towards your goal. But because you have the belly button, and you are the authority down here, you, you have to make a legal transaction. You have to say it. 
Is there anybody even listening? Yeah. Amen. You have to, it's a legal transaction. So I announce, I announce that Florida is mine. And so is Texas. And Arizona. And Georgia. And North Carolina. And, and that will be the first five. And I'll notify the governors on Monday. No, 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 this is nothing to do. This is nothing to do with going to the mansions and talking to them. What it is, is I made a decision because I'm sent. See, I waited until I'm sent, and then I make the announcement. When the Lord said, I want you to make your own Facebook. And I want it to be something that, that fulfills Ephesians 4, where people can just encourage each other and connect. And then when we start the homeschooling, then, then we can connect that with, with the homeschooling and with Warrior Health and with first responders and all the, the 36 departments that we, we are forming. Everybody will connect within their group, global prayer. And then all the kids programs. And, and, and the kids programs, you should see what we're doing. The kids will have their own website. And um, they, when they get on the website, there's a store and all these activities, and what they do is they hit a, a, a little timer. It's a little, uh, the, sand, the hourglass. And um, you, they punch that, and they, they pray in the Spirit. And then when they're done, they can stop it. And then they have to read Bible verses, and they time that. And then at the end of the month, when they get enough credits, they can go get something from the store. Does it, take a, does it take a flight attendant praying in tongues and a, and a hairdresser praying in tongues? I mean, but, but that's what we're going to do. The, the kids will get on, and they're, they're, I'm documenting all my training from, the, from my first flight the whole way up to my, the fighter jet that I flew a couple weeks ago. Everything is filmed. They're going to they're gonna be able to watch my training in a, like a reality show. And all my pilots, they're all qualified instructors. They're all going to be teaching classes. They're all going to be down there uh, in, a, in an undisclosed place that we're already purchasing to, to, to make a flight school. And the kids will go down there and they'll have camp. And we're going to have the uh, astronaut, Charlie, come and speak. They're, they're, the, re the rest of one of my pilots, he's, he just, I just got the notice this morning. He, he's opening a, another, another restaurant at this place. And we're building a hangar at this airport. You all look at me like, hey, ain't kidding. Not. <laughs> well, somebody's got to do it. I'm, I'm not an expert, but, you know, God, God is calling people that aren't experts to do things that are excellent, you know. Okay, so I want to manifest what's inside of me. So the first thing you do is you recognize your value. So this, this move of God, this final ingredient, is supernatural displacement, where something that God put inside of you starts to come out and when it does it demands the space that's being occupied by something else it, de it demands to create a space and trespassing it's what i read i was supernaturally imparting to you last night when i read the old covenant it says that that you will drive out your enemies they will fear you they will fear me and I, those who oppose you, I will oppose. And I was doing that to, to get you ready for this. Something has to happen within each person in the body of Christ. It's not the apostle or the prophet that stands with a staff, like with an Old Testament garment on and stomps his foot and, and proclaims it. We're all prophets. Amen. We all can prophesy. 
Paul said, I wish that everyone would prophesy. Moses said, I wish everyone would prophesy because then they wouldn't be bashing me. He didn't say that, but that's what was going on. He had all, all those numbskulls, you know, four and a half million people. And they, he was just done with them. And God was done with them. So that made it even harder on Moses. It was easy just to go with God and just wipe them all out. But he stood in the gap for them. And one day they broke out. They were, there was a group prophesying. And they ran and go, hey, you know, these non-prophets are prophesying. <laughs> he said, I wish all Israel would prophesy. Paul said, I wish that all would prophesy and desire the greater gifts, the better gifts, which is prophecy. Why? To build everybody up. So when you're prophesying, you're taking something from the other realm and you're making it audible. And when it becomes audible, it is a transaction. Because now, something supernatural has come in. I, I gotta stay as hard on my feelings. If I, feedback there. Something from the other realm needs to come into this realm. It, it touches people's ears, and then it goes into their spirit and activates them. The whole time, it's dispelling devils. It's displacing devils. It's pushing them back. It's pushing back false ideas. It's pulling down strongholds that are exalting itself above the knowledge of God. That's spiritual warfare. So you, you don't know this, and I'm not, I can't tell you this, but right now there are signals being broadcast to influence you. But you don't know that, and you know, nobody believes that. There's frequencies, there's all kinds of things affecting you. See, she's upset. I want to go with her and go get some eggs and bacon myself. <laughs> but see, she, she's upset. You can hear that. But you should hear what's happening in the spirit. Because when I have slipped over into the spirit, I can hear demons that have come to scream. And I was irritated and I didn't know why. And I'm like, I just want to slap somebody. But I don't know why. I found out that these demons come and they're screaming at the top of their lung and they're, they're jumping up and down. They're so mad. They're trying to get me irritated so that what? I would manifest. But if I don't do anything and I look at them and I go, go in the name of Jesus, they're like, they just, they just, they pack up their little 1967 microbus and leave. You know, with smoke coming out the back. What I did was, I, I, I did not allow that transaction to happen. See, they, 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 need, they need you. You're the authority. They need human beings to do their dirty work. They are disembodied. They have no expression. They got to get you on edge. I don't want to be a puppet. For the world. I want to be an uh, ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to tie all this up now because essentially what happens is if you realize that you are the currency of heaven Amen. and that, that this world's money, it could all be pulled away from us. It could all be announced tomorrow just like the, the Nazis did. They, they announced that the German mark is worth nothing today. And they just, they could start a new currency. Right, right. And then everything you have, it could be zero. Right. They could do that because we sold out to the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Good word. It's already true. So you, you would essentially have to go and start your own world on another planet. And then you could do the same thing that they, because it's, it's worthless. But instead of going to another planet, just stay here and start to recognize your value and start to make transactions from you, from your spirit out. First of all, by proclaiming with your words, 
So, so like uh, for a year, I, I've known somebody who was supposed to be a pastor. And so I just call, started calling them pastor. But they had heard from God that they're, they're, they're called to be a pastor now. But see, in my spirit, they were already a pastor because I call them pastor for a whole year. With every transaction, it's tied, there's a tie in the spirit to the next transaction. So it's a domino effect. So one word starts the seven days of creation or the six days plus the rest. When God spoke, it started a chain reaction until it was finished. When he breathed in the man and he became a living soul, it started a, train, a chain reaction because Eve was inside of him. And it was already set up that way. He, he didn't have to take some more dirt and make woman. He was creating a chain reaction in a relationship to represent how it is in heaven. And I see that in heaven, but I don't see it on the earth. But I know why all of us have the problems we do. But because I'm a human being too as well, I have to constantly deal with not only knowing the truth, but being patient with myself and with others. Because I know exactly what God's plan is, even today. Even right now. Because as I've been talking, I can hear the angelic choir singing. Right now. And they, they, they have been singing for the last few minutes. And see, now, as soon as I said that, I took something from the other realm and I made you aware of it. And you, you can feel it as I said it. All your spirits, all your spirits just released. I could feel your spirits release into this room to listen about something that you weren't aware of until I said it. But the angels are here and it's beautiful. And they're singing right now. Because the angels know that they want what was told to Paul to be preached Paul preached about this and the other realm and how we are to focus on things above and that we are to grab hold of that which Christ has taken for us. It says, take hold. I take hold, he said, of those things which Christ has taken hold of for me. So I take hold of those things, but they're com it's a completed work. So this weekend, what has happened since Friday night is spiritual displacement has happened. Supernatural displacement. Because a deposit that is already in you is being activated by hearing the good news of the gospel. And hearing the truth about who you are and who Jesus is and the relationship of working with him until he comes. Is that you are the one who's in charge. And at one point, the circus will close down and the tents will be taken down. And the sideshow that you're watching is going to be abolished. And it doesn't matter whether it's in this life or the next. It's if you are faithful at what you're called to do where you're at. I make the decisions that as far as I'm concerned, these people who have given themselves over to Satan, they are finished. The, their, their end has come. See, I know that. It's pending. But Paul said some people are judged immediately for their sin. But Paul said there are others where their sin follows them from behind until the judgment day. So some people get paid back right away. It's like the guy who almost hits you on the highway 
And, and then you watch as he almost hits the cop in front of you, and then you start laughing, okay, <laughs> justice. <laughs> How many times does that happen? Yes. But you're excited because why? Justice. The, cops, yeah. the cop saw it. You don't have to explain it. To, you don't have to make the call. You don't have to do nothing. People pushing you, you know. They pass you, they whip you the finger, and then they speed by the cop, you know. And, I, and that happened to my friend Larry. Larry's in heaven. Larry would buy, like, he would buy all the pace cars for the, all the races, Daytona 500. He would buy the, you know, the Corvette or whatever they used that year. And so he, he, it looked like an Easter egg, you know. But he would just buy and sell cars. And so he never knew what he was going to show up in. And so he, he, he had the pace car, and it, you know, the Daytona 500, and it was a, that really cool Corvette or whatever, you know. And um, so he was going down the highway there in, in Arizona to his, his place, and it's just a two-lane highway, and there's just a, a place where you can have the dotted line you can pass, but you have to, there's only one stretch where it's long enough that you could see enough to be able to, to pass a group of cars. So... He's coming to us, and he said, uh, there's this whole line of cars going really slow. And he had this pace car, and he said, I'll just take it up uh, over 200 miles an hour or whatever. What he, what, I don't know what he was going to do. But he went out. He passed the whole line of cars. I mean, like 15, 20 cars. And he pulled back in right where the solid line is. And he looked in the rearview mirror and he realized why everybody was going slow. <laughs> he, passed the, he passed that cop at 170. He's, the cop stops him. He just pulls over and turns himself in. The cop says, I, I, I didn't clock you. You were going way faster than I could clock you. He said, but you did. He said, the ticket I'm giving you is because you, you hit the solid line when you went back in. <laughs> He goes, you know what, I'm not going to even give you a ticket. I just got to go back. He was laughing so hard, the cop said, I'm just going to go back. And I can't wait to tell my, my priest. You know. <laughs> so what are you going to do right now in your spirit? You're going to identify what's inside of you and who's inside of you, and you're going to see your value, and then you're going to let it fly out of your mouth. You're going to ask. You're going to proclaim. You're going to prophesy. And when you do that, you are lit up on the map. And the transaction starts to occur. But just remember that there, you're attached to your transaction is another transaction. It's a chain reaction. And this is how it's going to be for the next couple of years. At Warrior Knows, we're going to see things start to change within people, but then it's going to change within the groups. And people are going to start to take command of their life. Um, the Reformation, Mar you know, Martin Luther. And, and the Reformation, all these different things were because people realized that individuals had inserted themselves in as a middleman. And this, I found, is the world system. You know, I always wondered, like, why in Ezekiel 28 and then and in Isaiah 14, where it gives us the information about Hillel. If you look it up, it's not Lucifer. The word is Hillel which is the bright and shining one. And so the Hebrew word there is halal, which has the name of God in it, where Lucifer doesn't have the name of God in it. And if the cherub was created by God, Michael, you know, Gabriel, Israel, all these L's, it has God's name in it. So I said, Lord, what, you know, what was his real name? Because he had to have your name in it from the beginning because he was made perfect. And so I looked up the Hebrew and read, and I'm like shocked. It's Hillel. It's right there. So why did they, why did the, why did the, uh, these people that translated, why would they put that word in there when it's not even there in the Hebrew? Just asking. Okay. 
And it says here, it says, it says in that because of the multitude of your merchandising, your trafficking. And he said, you, you profaned your sanctuaries. And then so I started looking up all the Hebrew words, did this big long study, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's all right here. He became the middleman. He inserted himself into, so the system that we have now is his system. So I can't talk to you about making a transaction because I got to have somebody with me that's a middleman to do all the paperwork. It's like, okay, what if I don't want to do that? What if I just want to go down the street and do it myself? I'm just asking this to show you something. It happened in the church too. The people were looking to the Pharisees. Come on now, we're all mature. Jesus came and he was speaking volumes of supernatural things. And the people are saying, no one ever talks like this. And not even the Pharisees, you know, and oh, they, they just like, well, they're going to lose their people, which means they're going to lose their tithe because it's all about the money. Let's just be honest. It's all about the money. When you, when it comes down to it, it's all about the money. So if you don't pass your money test, there's no way that you're going to ever be effective if you don't pass your money test. Because the system is set up that that's all it's about. So why did it become about the offerings? The offerings don't even pay this much. There are seven avenues and more to come that has nothing to do with offerings that God created. It's the same way with everything else in your life. So why did it become about the money? Because of the multitude of his trafficking and his merchandising, he became corrupted and he fell. But he, it says that he was the sum, he had the seal of perfection on him, it says in Hebrew. Oh, how, how uh, far you've fallen. So that spirit arranges so that you can never get out of debt. And unless you start to make a transaction based on your value. And it's set up so that you'll never get well. It's set up so that you could just hope you live to be 70. When you're supposed to live much longer than that. Why? Because of your value. Your heavenly value, Jesus came and did good and healed everyone that was oppressed of the devil. He went around doing good and healing everyone. He never made anyone sick. I've checked it out. He never, he was doing the will of the Father. So why, if God made somebody sick, why would he go around and make them well? He would be working against his Father. He only did what his Father did. Now, now listen to me. I'm only telling you this so that you see the original plan. And do you see your heavenly value that Jesus went around doing good because that's what God does. He heals people because he's good. Amen. And, and he even says, who is doing it? Those who are oppressed to the devil. No, we have all kinds of things that are happening because of our environment. But I don't have to be a product of my environment. It's just like you. If you would remove yourself from certain people, you would stop acting like them. And you'd actually be nice. Why? Because people influence you. Amen. Well, what if, what, if, what if I would expel demons and there was no more demonic influence in your life? What if you just, what if you just expelled demons? Can you imagine that? Not waiting for the apostle to do it? Or the prophet or the pastor or the teacher? What, what if you just expelled demons? Would there, be a, would there be a behavior change? Amen. Would there be a character change? I've seen it so many times.
People change because that whatever it was that was there is not there anymore and they change. It's the same way with your diet. It's the same way with your finances. It's, just, it's, it's with your relationships. It has to do with supernatural displacement where God comes into your life and we don't wait for him to come back on his white horse. We occupy until he comes. Yes. That sounds familiar. It's because it's a command yes. to occupy until he comes. Amen. When he comes, we're going to see him as he is. And Paul says, we're going to be like him. Amen. So now that you know that, why don't we just start acting like it? Amen. Well, what does God do? He calls things that are not as though they were. Amen. Why? Because they exist. Yes. It's two realms. It's not a magic show. It's literally seen into the spirit realm. I see my end. Amen. I'm following a flight plan tomorrow to go to Phoenix. Don't follow me. I'm going to work. <laughs> The reason I put Phoenix as my end result is because that's where I want to go. I draw a straight line from here right across the street. Don't go over there. I'm going to work. I'm going to fly a straight line there. Now, if something happens where we don't fly a straight line, as long as the destination is still in there, I'm fine with that. It's just going to... But, you know, when they tell you, you know, hey, can you go... Uh, 20 degrees left for traffic. I go, you know what? Are you paying for this? Because and so it's because it's easier for them to say it. It's like when, when, the, when a couple weeks ago we had an engine act up because they put the seals in wrong when they inspected it the day before. So I'll get up here. 12 hours later and two run-ups later, 800 pounds of gas and we didn't even move an inch running the engines to make sure that they didn't fail It was 1100 pounds to get back to Phoenix 800 pounds sitting there testing the engine and it wasn't even our fault So It wasn't our fault and it delayed me a day So in that instance, you got to believe for God to make it up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you wouldn't even know that happened. I'm just as happy as the day I got the airplane. But see, you have to be ready for Satan to come and try to mess things up and not let it affect you. Now, you can't run to an apostle every time something happens or your pastor. <laughs> Listen, I'm just telling you the truth of what I saw in heaven. The fivefold ministry of church is there to build you up into maturity, in the faith, the unity of the faith. You are to go to the marketplace and own it. Amen. You are to go to work and own it. Amen. Amen. So this is what I learned to do. I pray from the spirit. I say some things in English that I feel like are coming up from the spirit into my understanding. So it might just be a word or two. I'm telling you how I'm going to save your life right now. You're not going to die early. I'm telling you, you better listen to me. Or I'll call Sven and he'll bring the jet right now and we'll leave. I'm telling you how to do this. Life is born from the spirit. It's not born physically. It all started in the spirit before it became physical. So you got to remember that, that God spoke something in the, you know, there's a word in Hebrew that's not even known. Because it's, it's, not, it's not used. It's ex nihilo. Ex nihilo means something out of nothing. See, God formed. He formed the earth. It says that he took well, uh, material was already there. It was void. And he formed it. And then he spoke. And let th that 
speaking something that doesn't exist. Do you know how powerful it is to take, to take something that doesn't exist and make it happen Amen. from nothing? Everything that you would ever need, according to Scripture, if you want to bring in the Bible, into it, everything you ever need for life and godliness is already deposited in you through the power. I mean, if you want to bring Peter into it, through the power of the resurrection. It's already in you. Everything you're ever going to need for life and godliness is already in you. It's an unlimited supply. It's an unlimited supply. It's in you. And even the Speaker of the House can't do anything about it. It doesn't matter if they meet today and say, oh no. Why? Because you have value. You don't need to go to a middleman. You have life inside of you. That, that my wife is a witness. I tell my doctor I'm coming down with a healing. I tell him, this is where I'm going. How do I get there? I'm working my way out of this. If I'm in an ambulance going to the hospital, which I won't be, but if I was, I'd be praying in tongues at the top of my lungs, yes. quoting every scripture. Yes. This will not end in death. I will be in the land of the living. I will see my faithful God in the land of the living. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go when I want to go. Well, that sounds kind of bold. Well, if God could tell Moses to die, then he can tell me to live. I mean, I'm not Ananias and Sapphira. I'm not lying to the Holy Spirit. So why can't I live? Why can't my relationships work? When everybody else is failing. Why can't I get over people who have done me wrong? I can't. I just forgive them. Why? Because I hand the case over to the judge then. And then when they come to me, it's like, hey, you know what? Sorry. I hand it over to my lawyer. It's as though it never happened. I release everybody. You need to do that. You need to realize your value. Okay. So I pray, I proclaim, and I wait for that word to come up in English. And then I say that too. Well, that's a double punch. The devil just got hit and he wasn't expecting the second one. <laughs> bam, bam. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ told me. I've never told anyone this, but I'm telling you to this morning. He told me when the devil hits you, he hit him back twice. Amen. Immediately. Twice, immediately. So if he steals, you'll notice all the giving. It's because when he steals, you'll see me giving. I'll be writing checks. I go, you know what? This will cause you to think twice about the next time you touch me. And I remember the time I told Kelly, he said, oh, you're not going to get that million dollars you were believing for. I said, well, now it's two. And that came already. And you haven't heard a thing from him since. <laughs> Why? Because he pushes you and he pushes you into the glory. Amen. He pushes you into the space that he occupied because he's pushing you into action. And that's what it's all about. It's all about manifestation. I wish I would have even opened my notes. <laughs> Is if the devil pushes you, you push him back. But you push him back twice. You establish your authority. If demons are supposed to be listening to you, then why do we have the mess we do in our government? It's because the corporate church is not doing and standing up against the gates of hell. Because they're not supposed to be prevailing against the church. So what happened was, is the fake church with its cardboard building fell and then the real church stands up. The corporate 
the corporate church. No, no, no I, I have pastor friends. I have, I have lots of churches that they're doing what they're supposed to do. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who have a form of godliness but deny the power of it. The power has to do with authority. People that, that you, you would know, I've met, all they have to do is stomp their foot and devils leave. They don't say a word. Why? Because the devils know we've made them mad and they just leave. They would rather show themselves out than be cast out and told never come back. So they leave early so that they're not told they can't come back. That's when you say, hey, wait, come back. I got something to tell you. Never come back. No, I'm serious. That's what happened. So the evil spirits are pushing you. And I'm telling you this morning, which is now this afternoon, that has it got you into action yet? This morning, I went to eat something and it was fake. I said, you know what? When am I going to stop eating fake eggs? <laughs> because it's just neutral. So, so I just took a couple fiber pills and I felt full. It's like, I, it just hit me this morning. It's like, this is what I do with religion. I'm not, want the, I don't want the fake. If, if, it, if it gets to where it's more fun to play with the kids in the back with the airplanes, that's what I'll do. If it gets too fake. So I want to ask you this again because I need delivered. Why is it about the money? I want to know why is it all about the money? Why is it always about the money? Oh, you're not, you know, you go there, you won't get many crowds. Okay, I'm going anyway just because you said that. Anything else you want to say? Why is it the motivation about the money? I'll tell you why. It's set up down here to be about the money. Yes. And, the, and we cannot fall into it. It's the same way. Why is it all about just masking the symptoms instead of taking care of them? Why? 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 No, I'm, I'm asking you why. It's because the system, the, the world system is set up that way to not resolve anything. Not to resolve your debt, not to resolve your relationship problems, not to resolve your finances, not to resolve your health. All the different circles of your life, the aspects of your life, the things that affect you the most. But you know what? I remember, I remember sitting fishing. I would go through the woods in our property because we lived on a farm and stuff. Go through and there was this, I had fished out all the, all the different lakes and ponds. So I decided, well, you know what? I'm going to go that one on the golf course. <laughs> I was sitting there. I guess because I was a kid, I didn't, they didn't say anything. But I'm sitting there. And I'm not a Christian. And in front of me, the water disappeared. And I saw this largemouth bass grab my bait and start to run with it. It was just a flash. And then I looked at my rod and it was leaving me. <laughs> so I pulled on it and I pulled out the same fish I saw in a vision as a non-Christian. What happened? I got a peek into the other realm. Why? Because even though I was going to hell, I was still a spirit being. I accidentally slipped into the future. So when Jesus came into my heart and then he appeared to me, he told me at 19 that I was going to go to college and then I was going to be an airline employee and finish out a career there. I'm like, oh, really? So I'm going to be a pilot. He goes, no, you're going to be a flight attendant. I'm like, you know what? You're having a bad day. <laughs> uh, we'll talk tomorrow. No, it all happened. It happened anyway. 
So do you understand me a little better about now, how I, why I am the way I am? Because I couldn't do what has already happened. I can't manufacture it. I can't explain it. I can't take credit for it. So isn't there hope inside of you? Amen. 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 And, and really, really, all your money is God's money. Amen. And he will tell you what to do with it. But remember to unhook yourself from the world system. And it's the same thing with your health. Unhook yourself from the system and pray. Because there, you know, my, my, my doctor for, for all my certificates for, for being a pilot and also my, my regular doctor, we see eye to eye. They know about my faith. They understand that this is the way we operate. And if you can, if you can operate in that realm, then we're going to be fine. And so he asked me, would you like, my doctor asked me, would you like to do something natural? He said, I will monitor you and we'll see if it's potent enough. What he did was, we did things to boost my immune system. And all the symptoms went away without, without drugs. That's what I'm talking about. There's a pathway out. Now, I understand sometimes you need surgery and you need all the, I mean, I understand there's organic things. There's biological things. It's not a devil. There's the, the devil would tell you, I'm not even in the area. Okay. But it's a fallen world and we're being poisoned by our environment. Okay. But you will find, you will find this out that we, our insides are traumatized. My, my digestive system is traumatized because of flying and my career and the way that I ate or didn't eat, it's traumatized. It needs, it needs to be new, it needs to get to a place where it feels safe. And the stuff that we eat does not allow that to happen. And it's the same way with our relationships. We're traumatized. By people, crazy people, <laughs> our own flesh and blood. We're traumatized by the monetary system that causes us to not be identified as being valuable. My, my company that I work for, I got paid a lot of money, but it was, I was worth more. No one's going to pay me what I'm worth. Because no one discerns your value. But there were people within the company that discerned my value. And they did the best they could with what power they had. But God Almighty has already proclaimed what your value is. Amen. And he has invested everything into that. With that being said, I would advise you to guard who you hang around with, what you eat, and what you do with your money. Because it's tied to this world system. There's a system around you that makes you want to, you know, you have to submit to it. But you, until, until something happens that prevents us from doing all these things, we still, have the, we still have the authority and the power to do something about it. And when enough people are doing the right thing, the wrong thing looks really stupid. Yep. Yeah. It seems impossible now. But just turn your TV off and get, and get delivered from that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, there's a power in this room that wants... The power of God is here to heal. And in that house, you know, where the friends lowered him in the, through the roof, 
it says that Jesus was there in the house and it says and a conjunction and the power of God was present to heal. Amen. Two different things. Jesus was there and the power of God was present to heal. Now, Paul said this. He said, I'm not there with you. But he said, turn that one over to Satan. For the destruction of his flesh that his soul may be saved in the day. He said, when you gather together in the power of God and my spirit is there with you. Talking about Paul's own spirit. Do this thing. Yeah, but we're having baby dedications that day. <laughs> You're going to turn, you know, the pastor gets up, uh, we're going to turn someone over to Satan. Uh, may the subject come forward. <laughs> See how far off we are? How, how, how many people would lie to the Holy Spirit? If we had Ananias and Sapphira meeting. That was in the New Testament. The power of God is, is here, present to heal. What was the catalyst? The catalyst was their faith. It wasn't the faith of the person in the bed. It was the four friends. It was a corporate agreement. Four people decided that they were going to do something about this. They couldn't get into the house. The power of God was there. Jesus was in there. So they, they did the unthinkable. They, they lowered the person through the roof. And this is what happens in every meeting. It comes to this place where the angels are here singing. The power of God is present to heal. And you all don't know what to do at this point. Because most church services never get to this point. <laughs> but there has to be a catalyst of a manifestation in order to cause it to come from the realm that you can feel around you into this physical realm. Thank you, Kevin. Amen. So do I have to call a child up here to prophesy? I know, I know, I know a couple of little girls that could prophesy right now. What you're feeling is you're on the edge of your miracle and there has to be some sort of response. There has to be something happen physically to make the transaction. So the, the only thing, the only thing that I can do is I can cause, that was really long. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that was amazing. That was good. Your response, the reason why I, I load the worship at the end is so that you could respond back to God from hearing the word. But I wanna tell you that, that most of you in God's book right now are healed. Most of you actually, literally, it's manifested. I'm serious. And I'm going to be honest because I want to be transparent with you. you have, I've never gotten COVID. But I'll tell you what, I have stayed up. One night I stayed up almost all nights saying, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> You have no idea. I had to fight. I had to push. No, 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 no. I'm just being transparent with you. I, I will never get it. But I had to fight. Because if he gets through me, he's gotten through a barrier. And I'm not going to let that happen. But I want all of you to be the barrier. So today you will change the way you deal with your finances. You will change the way you do deal with your body. You will change the way you deal with your relationships. 
and you will change the way you deal with the devil. Because he needs displaced. He is trespassing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan, we forbid you to touch the body of Christ. We join arms and lock arms together all over the world. And we forbid you to touch us. We are highly favored and valued by God. We are His workmanship. We are the body of Christ on the earth. And we take power and control away from you. May it return to the body, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. May all the churches who preach the gospel, may they prosper. May every minister who's called be ignited right now in the name of Jesus by the fire from the altar. May the word burn in them all of those who are called to preach the good news. May they arise. Hallelujah. May they speak from the fire. I speak healing to your bodies right now. I command sickness to go in Jesus' name. I drive out every lying devil. I command every traumatic event to be healed now in the name of Jesus. I break rejection and I drive it out in the name of Jesus. May all the warriors arise. Hallelujah. We stand in all the power of God. We stand in the authority of the name of Jesus. We come against every foul, lying, religious devil by the blood and the power of God. In the name of Jesus, we drive you out, Satan. We drive you out, you liars. Let go. Let go of this state. Let go of this government. In the name of Jesus, we come against any evil spirits coming against this country. May the righteous flourish. May the just prosper. May righteousness arise in this country. The Spirit is saying, He's saying the, the door is right before you. It's just one step. Just step in. That's what He's saying. That's what the Spirit is saying. Just step in. Step in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Spirit's just encouraging you to, to trust. You ha- I mean, I'll just tell you what He said. He said, you haven't done that well on your own, so why don't you just turn yourself over? That's what He said. <laughs> Yes, yes. The darkness is dispelled. This is Holy Week. The devil doesn't have a holiday. Yeah, the Spirit's just saying, you can do this. You can do this under my authority and my power. You can stand up and proclaim the goodness of God. The door is before us and that door is our mouth. So let's tell the Lord, we receive, Lord, everything you have for us. We receive the word you've sown into our hearts this weekend. And we declare 
30, 60, and 100 fold return on that word. And we go forward in the fire. And let's pray. I just saw ourselves praying in the spirit as Kevin was teaching about praying in other tongues and then praying out the word that the Lord gives you. So let's do that. We've been taught that. Let's do that. So let's just pray a little bit. Let's just go a little bit further. Jesus went a little bit further when he was in the garden. There's a tipping point in the spirit. So kambash, damba, just join with me. Panda salamondo rabase, basondo rabasete, sobo, shabate, 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 shamando, shamande, shamando, shamande, shamande. Seal it in. Seal it in. Masakala borra babase. Lift up your voice. Masakoto bande for your family, for the nation, for the nations. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. Napala tokorra baste. Ambare stay, an open door for the harvest, an open door. We call in our loved ones. Salvation, covenant keeping God. He's a covenant keeping God. He's a covenant keeping God. He's a covenant keeping God. The blood, the blood, the blood, the covenant cut in the blood of Jesus Christ from the foundations of the world, from the foundations of the world. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up our hands. Let's lift up our hands to the Lord. Let's thank Him. Let's worship Him. Let's seal it in with praise. He loves our thankful hearts. Let's just bless the Lord. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. Faithful, Lord. You're faithful. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. You're faithful, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're faithful, Lord. You're so faithful. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. You're worthy, Lord. We step through the door and we say thank you for all you sown into us. We say thank you. And we won't forget, we won't let it slip away We're stepping into the other side Oh, we receive all you have for us, God And we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name Let our praise get louder Let our praise get bolder Let our praise get louder For all you've done for us Let our praise get Accept the invitation to step on through to the other side, to the other side with you. And we're stepping through to the other side, other side, to the other side, other side, to the other side, to the other side with you. And we're stepping through to the other side, to the other side, to the other side, to the other side, to the other side with you. We say yes to the invitation to come through the door you prepared for us. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And oh.
say thank you, thank you. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And oh, 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 we say thank you, thank you, and oh. Stepping through, yes, we're coming towards you, and we're stepping through to the other side. And oh, 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 we say thank you, thank you, and oh.
as we behold the sun as we behold the lion and the lamb we behold Blessing to your name, you deserve it all. And you receive the glory, you receive the honor, you receive it all. Here it is, here it is, God. You receive the glory, you receive the honor, you receive it all. You receive the glory, you receive the honor, you receive it all. Here it is, here it is. And you receive the glory. You receive the honor, you receive it all, here it is before you. Let our incense arise, God, to your throne, let our incense arise, morning, noon, and night, a constant incense. To rising to your throne. Sirma hai ra kai ra bas rohe na hai aye ni kora na hai ra babase. Rohe na he ra ba ba, ye kera na se ro na e. Rohe na e, ye te kera ma se. Rohe na e ra ba ba se, kore ande ya se na na e. Rohe ra ba 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 se. Nothing can stay the same. Nothing can stay the same. 'Cause everything has changed, and nothing can stay the same. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. And nothing can stay the same. Everything has changed. And everything has changed. And nothing can stay the same. Everything has changed. And everything has changed. Nothing can stay the same. Everything has changed, and everything has changed, and nothing can stay the same. Everything has changed, 'cause I take every thought captive. I have the mind of Christ. I think like you do. So everything has changed. Everything has changed. Oh, my family will never be the same. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. Joy will fill.
build your home again and the peace of God will reign there and joy will fill your home again and the peace of God will reign there everything has changed joy will fill your home again every square inch and the peace of God shall reign the peace of God shall reign oh the peace that passes all our understanding shall reign it shall reign cause you've stepped through the other side you step through the other side no compromise and you step through the other side and you step through the other side no compromise so everything has changed and nothing can stay the same Jesus, thank you for your light. Thank you that you're the way I'm following. And thank you for your truth. You're constantly revealing something new to me. And thank you for making a way and being the door for me to step through step through to the greater things step through to the greater things step through to the greater things you've been asking you'll receive step on through to the greater things step on through to the greater things you've asked and you'll receive Cause there's greater things still to come I'm not even close to dying with you Oh, there's greater things still to come I'm not even close to being done with you Can't you feel it? Don't you perceive it? Oh, I'm not even close to through with you, no. I'm not even close to being done with you. Just asking you'll receive. Just ask it of me. And see if I don't come through Just ask, just open your mouth Just ask, just ask Ask a little bigger, ask a little bigger Ask a little bigger, ask a little bigger of me And when we receive, we'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the glory. Oh, we'll give you all the glory. We won't boast in ourselves, but we'll boast in the Lord for all he's done, for his goodness and his mercy and his faithfulness and his everlasting love. I'll make my boast alone in the Lord for he is good to me. He is faithful to come through Through 
faithful one, faithful one, faithful one, you are God. You can't be any other way but good. You can't be any other way but good. Faithful, faithful one to me. I hear him saying, I'm well pleased. I'm well pleased. I'm well pleased with you. My righteous holy one, I'm well pleased with you. I'm well pleased with you. I'm well pleased with you. So lift up your head, lift up your head, lift up your head. Holy and righteous, beautiful and glorious you are to me. And I'm well pleased, I'm well pleased, I'm well pleased with you. Holy and righteous, beautiful and glorious one. I'm well pleased, I'm well pleased with you. Stay. 
inside of me you're worth it all you're worth my time you're worth my sacrifice and you gave it all so i'll give my whole everything to you everything to you and you Everything to you And you gave it all So I'll give my all Everything to you And you gave it all So I'll give my all Everything to you gave it all So I'll give my all right back to you I'll give my all right back to you Give it all. Bright and morning star 